If you're a hobby crafter like me and you're always in search of another tool or another toy, watch today's video. I have one that you need to add to your craft room. I have just totally enjoyed using a laser engraver. I've made um, dozens dozens and dozens of projects, we use them for hundreds of hours. And so we're really fortunate that Ofero sent us their 10 watt laser. I believe it's called the Ofero 2, um, the 10 watt laser. So we are, we're privileged to test it out. So today I'm going to show you what we think of the laser, some tips and tricks on how to use it. If you've received yours and you need help putting it together, we have the link down below to to a video of Ross showing you how to assemble the laser. But today I'm going to just show you some tips and tricks and some projects you can make with your laser engraver. Okay, I am sitting at my work table that I have our laser engraver on. I have it set up in the garage. I would highly recommend putting it in a place where there's ventilation. Tip number two, I would suggest making a work surface and drawing lines on the surface because you're gonna constantly be lining up your product um, or your project. Um, and you're going to want to make sure your um, machine stays square. So this is a uh, piece of, uh, I think it's MDF, if I'm correct on that. And I've drawn a grid on it so that I can line up my project that way. You have a couple choices with the machine um, that I know of. I'm sure there's more, but there's uh, two, piece, two kinds of software. One is laser Gerbil, gerbil, I don't know how you pronounce it, I call it gerbil. So laser gerbil, it's a free download um, and I have the link down below for that. The other one is called light burn and it's very economical. I have not tried that. The um, laser uh, gerbil, gerbil works really well with the machine. So I would suggest um, searching YouTube. I've found a couple good uh, videos on the software because the software really does make a, a difference on not so much the software itself, but knowing how to operate it, telling the machine to do what you want it to do. So I'm gonna first show you how to cut out an item so some of the tools you're gonna to wanna to have handy, a ruler that has um, millimeters on the side and a metal one is really nice so that it's, it's nice and sturdy. I always have some masking tape and I'll show you um, why because you can, if you're doing multiple, like just yesterday I, I had to do 50 little hearts and write words on, on these little one and a half inch hearts. I taped onto my work surface exactly where I set the heart each time and then I would tell the machine to go. So having some tape, this is a higher watt machine than I'm used to. Um, definitely need to have uh, safety glasses because you do not want to look at the laser. So have some glasses. This does come with the machine. A Faro has that included. Um, but I'm first going to show you how to cut out an item. This is just a little piece of Hobby uh, wood that I, I think I actually got at Hobby Lobby. And it looks like it's about three millimeters thick. So we're gonna cut out of that. When you do cut out and not uh, just engrave, having a piece of tin underneath your cutting out, because as you can see, it goes right through it and it, it um, instead of cutting your work table, the, the tin is stopping it. So have a piece of tin handy. A couple of things uh, that are unique to the machine. This one has um, the power button and the reset button and it kind of caught me off guard because if you hold the power button in, okay, and that little beep beep says that my laptop received this signal. Typically on uh, other machines I've used, at this point you hear a fan. There is no fan going until the machine starts running. So the, the machine is ready. Um, I just was caught off guard because I didn't hear the fan. Okay, as I said, I use uh, the Laser Gerbil uh, software and so I'm loading it in right now. And what I wanna say, when you're saving your artwork, like this is a cross that is um, also the word faith. You save your document to the edge of your um, design. Don't save it to the size of your project, save it to the edge of the design. 
But for this one, I'm not burning, I'm going to be cutting. So we need to uh, select vectorize, I'm going to make it 85 wide. So now, I this is the laser uh, software. You open up this to find out what kind of wood you are going to be using. So if I'm going to be cutting this out, I'm going to tell it to do plywood. In this little gray box there, you can see it says cut. And so, um, and the thickness is two millimeters. I'm going to tell it that I'm doing a three millimeter piece of wood. And I'm going to hit apply and create. And then the software is ready to go. One of the hardest things you're going to find with any laser is lining up your project. So with this one, um, it has a nice bright focus beam, but you do want to be careful. Sometimes that focus beam does make a mark on your wood, especially if you're doing leather. So um, I talk about that on a project here in a bit, but um, leather does leave a mark even with the focus beam. So I have, this is one of the uses for masking tape. I put a piece of masking tape in the center and I have an X for the center of my uh, piece of wood. So I'm going to lay this under here. So at this point you have on the a ferro machine you have a kickstand here and that is how you can adjust the height of your laser from your wood. And there's a little set screw right here and that's how you um, raise and lower your laser. So I'm going to lower that until the kickstand hits the bottom tighten up my set screw and bring up my kickstand. Using the lines on my um, board, I make sure that my metal is straight. And now I'm going to tell my project to go on this software, there's a button that says center. So I'm going to tell it to go to the center of my project. I'm going to kind of get it close where my little tape is. I'm going to hit focus. And you can see that the light shows up there. So I'm going to, yeah, that looks right on center. Straighten it up a squish. And now I wanna make sure that it is straight. So I'm going to hit frame and it'll, um, it'll go around the edge of my project. And what I do is I eyeball to make sure that the beam is straight with my wood. So it's not cutting or making any mark. So what this is doing, it is everything inside of here is where my design is going to be. So I, if I have to, I can adjust my wood left or right. But right now it looks like this is nice and square. The problem you have at this point is you really can't tell if this has cut all the way through and we cannot move our project at all. So looking at this, one way I can tell is if it has dropped down some, which it has. So that tells me that we're probably dropped all the way through because, yeah, I, I can feel it. I do, I'm just touching it with a, a screwdriver. If it wasn't, um, if there wasn't any give and drop down, I would tell the machine to do another pass. But we are together going to see how we did on this. Oh, it went all the way through. Beautiful. So the, the uh, engraving, the cutting part on this machine is absolutely fantastic. You can see in the, the background of my uh, camera shot here, I have bricks on my work surface. I um, have engraved on logs, and here's a video of doing that. 
um, and those are tall. And so you, um, in order to get this to go on a, a taller, maybe you have a box or something, if you have equal height items to set under each leg and then you can raise and lower your laser but having um, the bricks has been super handy to be put able to put those on each corner Um, this machine does even the little smallest words. Those are very legible. A thumbs up on even small print. I enjoy using the engraver on leather, but leather is a little different. The, always do a test piece. So this is my test piece, and I wanted to show you uh, first of all, um, I think I might have already mentioned it. When you save your file, save it just right at the edge of your artwork. And then when you tell the machine to frame it on leather, it actually burns a line in there, which I do not want. So I wanted to show you, I rarely tell it to frame when I'm using leather uh, because it does leave that line. This is a Bible cover. Um, and I have a, a video on how I make the Bible covers. The link's down below. But I want to put this same um, design on the front cover. So I am going to tell the machine to center. And then I'm going to put my artwork or my leather directly under that uh, lining up everything. Leather, I like to tape down the corners because it does kind of have a little bit of wobble in it. But since I am not uh, framing it, your measurements have to be really good. So I need to center this and I am going to tell it to focus. Perfect. And I still need to pull that piece of masking tape off of there. I don't want that obviously to stay on the design. So I'm going to tape down my leather. And you can see here, there is a little dot. It, it burnt through the uh, masking tape. So that is why I don't want to frame it. That will get hidden by my design. Okay, that one's all done. Finish time, five minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, I think the rest of the, the video, I'm gonna just show you some of the things that we've made, give you some idea of how long it takes for the machine to burn it, um, some just different uh, project ideas. But um, as you can tell, this machine really does a good job. But I'm just really appreciative to have uh, tested the Offero 2 machine. And again, this is the 10 watt version. Uh, the link is down below um, to order the machine. I give it totally two thumbs up.
So I appreciate you watching DIY in the house. If you have any questions or comment, we do our best to get right back to you. So please comment down below. But as always, thanks for watching.